I'm Chris Zero, um, and this is my defensive coach, Tony Porca. Um, coach Porca is from Finland, selected by Philadelphia Flyers in round 9 of the 1990 NHL entry draft. He played professional from 1988 to 2006 in the American and European Elite Hockey Leagues. Thank you. Thank you. I started skating around five years old when my brother, older brother joined a limited travel team. How did you become interested in hockey and how old were how old were you when you first, when you first put on skates? Well, I'm told I was about two years old when my great grandpa first took me to uh, a pond over in Finland where I was born. And um, the winters are very cold there, so everybody skates and naturally everybody's interested in hockey. So I was about two or three years old. Thank you. I understand that you were born and raised in Finland. How do you feel hockey in the United States compares to the hockey in Finland? Hockey is a little different. It's a little more. It's more competitive at early ages here in uh, in the United States. Uh, Finland is a small country, so it's a lot of develop development. Um, a little bit less games early on. Um, when it gets to professional hockey, rink size is bigger there, so it's more skilled, more skating, not as physical. So it's a, it's a little different game. Uh, United States being such a big country, there's a lot of players around here and a lot of competition, so that makes a difference too. Two and a half years ago, I joined a cyber school called Con Commonwealth Connections Academy. It gives me the ability to take my classes on the road when I travel for hockey, and it also has a very tough curriculum. How did you manage playing high-level hockey while being a successful student, and what advice would you give an 11-year-old on how to balance school? hockey, individual training, and childhood? Well, from my own experience, uh, you know, I can tell you, um, I was actually a senior in high school when I played my first year of professional hockey, so that really, uh, there was a lot of conflicts there. Um, I used to sit on the bus with my books and, and do the homework while the other guys were playing cards, the older guys, and you know, it always, it's, it's hard, but you have to put in the work. You know, and uh, I always got good grades. I had no problems with them. So I, I know my parents always, always uh, emphasize the importance of schooling, and that's the advice what I would give, uh, give young players right now. Take care of your schooling, hockey. Have fun with it. Work hard. If you become a hockey player, great. But at the same time, you know, you are able to take care of schooling, and that always comes first. Thank you. I have been playing defense for five years. I feel that the best way I can help my team is to keep my opponents from scoring. I have been taking defensive lessons and I am learning a lot. I know that you have played defense during your career. What defensive skills and keys would help me become an elite defenseman? Well, just like any other position, um, better athlete you are, better player you're going to be. So it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of different uh, exercises, a lot of different sports that you can play that makes you a complete athlete. It's not just a defensive skill that you have. It's a variety of sports, a variety of exercises, a variety of workouts that you have to do that you're a well-rounded athlete. So those, those well-rounded athletes are always the best players. Um, as far as playing defense, um, defense is a lot of responsibility. Um, you don't have to get credit for scoring goals, whatever. You have to be a certain type of person to uh, 
you know, bail your forwards out when they make mistakes and and put your body on the line and be a little bit mean sometimes, you know. So keep working, keep working hard in different different sports, different exercises, and you'll be a well-rounded athlete and a good defenseman. Thank you. Fuck. My coach has recently been using post-game review to help us improve in our game plan. What defensive techniques or do you recommend focusing on during video reviews and how did you go about implementing your coach's feedback? Well, if you're talking video reviews, you always have to focus on your positioning. Um, you need coaches helping you. Understanding positioning is the first thing. Um, always being on a defensive side, your gap control, um, it, it's, it's again, it's uh, there's a lot of different things that comes into play in defense, but def uh, positioning in different situations is, is key, and your coach really has to educate, he has to uh, teach you guys on the positioning. Also, um, you know, reading different situations, um, game is not always five on five, defensemen always see a lot of odd man situations, two on ones, three on ones, three on twos, again, it's all positioning, how you position yourself, how you read off of forwards, how you communicate. So um, ask a lot of questions if you're unsure where, how you should be playing different situations, and video will help you understand that. Do okay. they um, each take you in um, separately and show you um, what you can improve and what better? You can, but you can, you can also you do it as a team, um, show examples um, of cap control, show examples of positioning, all different examples, and they, those all different examples do apply to everybody. So I think everybody can learn from everybody else's mistakes, and when you do something well, everybody can also learn from that. Thank you. I found, I found that after long workouts, my muscles tense up and I'm really hungry and tired. What foods, nutritional supplements, and stretches did you use to improve your body, improve your body, increase flexibility, and maintain your health while playing hockey? Well, for young athletes like yourself, I, I would recommend just home cooked meals, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, lots of fluids, which means no sodas, no, no sugary drinks, um, lots of water. Um, there's no reason to take any supplements at your age. Um, healthy body, which eating vegetables, fruit, and home cooked meals, no processed foods. Um, you maintain, you know, um, your health and, and also at the same time, Recovery speeds up when your body is filled with nutrients. Also, stretching and uh, cool down after workouts is very important. Um, when you have a hard workout, a practice, your body, the muscles fill up with lactic acid. It's called lactic acid. And that causes you to uh, stiffen up. You feel sore muscles and tired muscles, and that has to be flushed out. So cool down means uh, a slow jog for 10 minutes, and a stretch, I know I used to stretch, even at home, watching TV, I'd be sitting on the floor and stretching at night. And I really found that that, that helped. Um, you have to maintain flexibility, because otherwise your muscles don't have the, um, they tense up, they're very short, muscles get short when you don't stretch them, and then you don't get the full range of motion when you're doing different exercises, and, and that increases a uh, risk of injuries. Thank you. During the off season, I stay active by swimming competitively on my community swim team. I also play lacrosse in the spring. In addition to these activities, what other conditioning do you re recommend so that I can move into the new season in the best shape possible? What was 
your typical off-season routine at my age? Well, at your age, um, I played, played a lot of different sports, uh, soccer, all kinds of different ball games. Um, basketball is very good. Um, racquetball, badminton, very explosive sports, uh, tennis. Uh, at your age, you should be playing a variety of sports, especially in the off season. Uh, you don't need to be on the ice that much. Take a little time off or off the ice. Again, make yourself a well-rounded athlete by by doing different sports. And you can also start a little bit of uh, you know strengthening of your body with your own body weight, little circuit trainings with sit-ups and push-ups and and core training and and uh, even some lunges and and squats without weights and of course sprints. Um, and running is always good. Um, so a variety of sports and the beginning stages of uh, also strengthening the body and, and running and different different distance running, longer distance, mid-range and uh, short sprints. Thank you. Hockey involves a lot of travel. One of the benefits of playing on elite team has been the opportunities to travel to places I've never been before and to meet people from all over the world. Could you share some of the ex experiences that hockey has opened you up to in terms of travel and friendships made aboard? Um. I've met a lot of people from a lot of players from all over the world. I played here in North America. I was in Europe, in Germany, Finland, and there were always, um, always players from all over the world. Whether it was Canadians, there were Germans, French, you know, Swedish, um, Czechs, Slovaks, Russians, and the funny thing is when you when you put on a team and and you're you're forced to these in this kind of environment with. You know, people that are don't necessarily even speak the same language as, as you, but still, um, all these experiences that you go through on a team, you basically become a lifelong friend, and uh, you know that's very important. That's that's a very unique experience. You hear stories and and you see cultures of of what the other you know country men are used to, and uh, it, it's something that I'll never forget, and that's something I, I'll, I cherish the rest of my life and still keep in touch with, uh, with a lot of the players that I played with. Thank you. It seems that the higher the level you reach in sports, the greater the sacrifices are to maintain that level of competition. The time and dedication required to play high-level ice hockey can be overwhelming at times. How did you discipline you discipline you learn learn as a kid help you when you began your professional career and in life in general? Well you're right. I mean it takes a lot of dedication and discipline um, to play at a high level. Um, I remember even as a kid having to uh, Leave on Christmas Day to go to a tournament. Didn't never really had a had a chance to enjoy these moments with the family. Or when we got to the age where friends were going to parties, well, you know, I was going to practice. You know, that's just that's something that you grow up with, and, and it goes with you. And then when you get to a certain age, you decide if that's what you want to do. If that this is something for me. But uh, that's usually a difference between um, you know average player or very good player is how disciplined you are, how dedicated you are, and uh, that is something that you have to learn yourself. You have to learn how to push yourself, not just somebody, some coach screaming at you to go, 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 and that's the only time you go. It has to come from within yourself, and you need to learn that, and that's how you become a good player. So, and I think it's it's in all aspects of life that carries. Hockey is so time consuming; it's your your whole life that it. Uh, you know, applies to all aspects of your life. Same discipline. Thank you again, Coach Porka. Thank you very much.